The Mets and Yanks are back at it again here. Not Jacob DeGrom. Minus 130, Frankie Montas has the ball against Taiwan Walker. Now, I still don't know, maybe because of the proximity, home field advantage is not as strong in a Subway series. But I would expect the Yankees at home, typically, not against DeGrom, not against Scherzer, to be a little bit of a heavier favorite. I wonder if we are seeing the Yankees, you know, Frankie Montas, who was added at the deadline to hopefully come in and be a super steady arm for them, being priced as not all that impressive. It'd be understandable. Frankie Montas has not been very good as a Yankee. What do you make of this number here in a Subway Series matchup? Yeah, first two games, we looked at unders, Kevin. We're going to go opposite in this game and look towards the over, and it's pretty simple to me. You're looking at last night where the Mets only scored two runs. I had the team total over four. It didn't work out in my favor, but I have no shame in coming back to the New York Mets thinking they can get a team total tonight because Montas has been terrible, at least the left-handed batters. But if we take a look as a whole over the past 30 days for Montas, close to a five-and-a-half XFIP number, strikeout percentage, 13%, and also, as I said, 28 batters he's faced from the left-hand side, Kevin. They've really gotten after him, a 572 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number of 350. Why is that important? Looks like six-plus batters from the left-hand side anticipated in the lineup for those New York Mets. So let's flip it over to the New York Yankees, who, quite frankly, we thought they were going to get a right-handed pitcher on the mound tonight, which they are, but we thought it was going to be Jacob deGrom. Now, here's the problem with the New York Yankees, which, again, maybe is a little bit from what we saw early in April and May. Looking at this lineup, and again, it's a right-handed pitcher. Sometimes you would struggle against lefties by saying, we just don't see them that much, and we just haven't gotten around to really hitting them. Well, Taiwan Walker has been absolutely brutal over the past month. A 6.75 XFIP number, not a big strikeout guy. Lefty-righty splits, Kevin. Take a look at this. Lefties weighted on base percentage against him, 469 with a 406. A 406 ISO power number. Righties, a 356 weighted on base percentage. But look at this lineup here for the New York Yankees. Aaron Judge, 101 at-bats over the past month against right-handed pitching. He's been sensational. 342 ISO power number and a 459. Every single other batter in the lineup today weighted on base percentage, which, again, you look at that 325 baseline, they are all under. So we're taking a leap of faith with the Yankees that they'll get it together. Why? Because everybody seemingly gets it together against Taiwan Walker, and also the Mets should be able to hit Frankie Montas. Mm. I'm looking for an over, even though yesterday offenses were stymied, and I liked a couple unders to start the day. I think this one in the Bronx goes over. Interesting spot. Another interesting number is the Frankie Montas strikeout prop. It's four and a half at minus one forty-four. If you're a projection player, you'll see that he would make a lot of sense to the over. But those projections are hoping that Frankie Montas can regain form, and I'm not sure he deserves that trust. His case per nine was about a nine and a half, not point four to be exact, in these uh, opening games for Oakland. So far, with three starts as a New York Yankee, it's a five point four. It's a huge drop off there. And it's giving you no chance to get over some strikeout numbers that, again, the projections are anticipating being winners. And you're paying a minus 144 right now to go over that four and a half. It's a tough spot. It's a tough spot to be in with Montas. If you don't mind taking a leap of faith, again, the projections are shining on him, but his performances have been nowhere near justifying playing that number. 